Hey guys, do you want to know 10 most important personal finance rules school won't teach you? Well, in this video, we're going to talk about top 10 most important personal finance rules school won't teach you. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Before we get started, please make sure you watch the video until the end, so you can find 10 most important personal finance rules school won't teach you, and also subscribe with the notification bell turned on so you can get notified anytime we upload a new video. I went to school for 20 years. I started when I was 4 and ended at 23 years of age. Although I earned valuable skills and lessons, made good friends and connections, and made a path forward for my life, I did not learn much about finances. School doesn't not teach you about money. They prepare you for the working life, a life where you could be an employee, self-employee or a businessman. I understand, schools are not meant to teach kids to become wealthy. Teachers who give the classes are not wealthy themselves, not even the dean. How could you ask someone to teach what they haven't done themselves? When you finish school, you encounter another reality in your life that shocks a lot of people. The reality of not having enough money. It is a hard one. Most of the students in the US and abroad leave school in debt. Their families do not have the means to pay for college, so they end up asking for expensive loans to afford getting a college education. Is this right? I think it is. What is not right is that they get overwhelmed with debt and do not pay it back on time. They incur interests and act like if nothing happened. I can relate to this as a man or woman that goes to get an annual physical checkup and says he, she is okay, when their glucose and cholesterol levels are all out of place. These are 10 very important personal finance rules school, won't teach you. Number 1. How to buy a house. People coming out from school go and get into more debt by owning a house. They are not comfortable enough owing $30,000 or $60,000 in student loans, they need more. They go and get a brand new car, spend at least $30,000 on it, and then go for the most expensive house they can borrow. That is the biggest mistake of your life. I will not go and get more debt if I already have debt in the first place. This has to be taught. I will talk about it so you can learn and teach it to someone younger. When you buy a house, the lender requires you to have a debt to income DTI, ratio of no more than 28 to 36 percent. This means that if you take all your debt and divide it by your income, it should not be more than 36 percent. If it is more than 36 percent, they will most likely deny you the loan. Or, you should look for a cheaper house, or put more money as a down payment. Buying a house is a big deal. Your mortgage should not be more than 28 percent of your gross income, and your total debt should not be more than 36% of it. This is a good rule to abide for. You should rent and save your money. When you are ready to buy, do your research, buy smart, keep emotions aside, and never spend more than what you can comfortably afford. Number 2. How to save. Fortunately for me, this was one of the only things that my parents ever taught me about money. You should always save, you should never spend it all. I can hear my dad saying this about 3 times a day for 21 years I lived with him. I did not start saving until I was out of college and got my first higher paying job. Back when I was an English teacher part time, I used all the money to make ends meet and party. Those were the good days. You should always aim to save 20% of your net income every month. Set it aside in an account that is safe and gives you something. It could be a high yield savings account or a CD. I know it is not the best return, but this money is not yet to be invested. Do not take 401k contributions into account for this 20%. Once you know exactly what investment you will pursue, your ROI and risk, go ahead and transfer the money from the account to the investment. This is the way to do it. Be frugal. Do not buy things based on emotions, do it based on rational thinking. Never buy something when you see it the first time. Spend some time thinking before making the expense. Never get monthly installments, unless it is an emergency and you can cover it in less than 12. Number 3. Have an emergency fund. Unfortunately, they don't teach you in school to be prepared for an emergency. They think that parents will take care of it all the time. It is sad, but it is true. What will happen if you lost your income? What will happen if you got into an accident? Those kinds of questions never came up in school. My dad had an insurance that covered my full tuition if he passed away before I finished my degree. That was great. Your emergency fund should have six months of monthly living expenses, so you can live comfortably and not worry as much. I hope you never have to withdraw money from it, but if you do, make sure you live frugally and just use it for basic housing and food needs. Do not go to restaurants and bars with emergency fund money. Number 4. Budgeting. School does not teach you how to budget your money. This is a task for parents. My parents taught me how to handle money, and I learned the hard way as well living on my own. 
There were times when I did a student exchange program in France where I did not have enough money to eat. I did not know how I was going to be able to eat the next week or so. With no friends and no family, barely speaking the language, I was learning the hard way. You have to know how much money is coming in and how much money is coming out every month. You need to minimize expenses to the limit and maximize your income to the max. After you do that, your life changes. You are able to save and invest more, have an emergency fund, pay off debt, and live happier. This is not a school obligation, it is a parent obligation. Number 5. Compound Interest Power Young people only think about drinking, partying, traveling and hustling. I understand, because I was the exact same way until I finished college. If you start investing your money when you are 20, chances are that in 20 years you may already be financially independent and retire. Imagine being 40 years old and able to do what you want in life. By opening an account with a broker and taking care of the commissions, you can earn 7-8% to per year on your money. That adds up pretty nicely in 20 years. Real estate is also a great investment to start in your 20s. You can buy something really cheap and ugly and fix it up with your friends. If you acquire multiple properties in your 20s, you can easily achieve the millionaire status when you get to your 40s. Number 6. Credit Scores, Credit Usage it is very important for a young person to get a credit card, keep it open, and pay it off every month. This builds his, her credit score, and over time they can borrow money from banks and lenders. You will need a house and car at a moment in your life. You will want to start a business. Every decision you take in America requires your credit score. If your credit score is bad, it closes a lot of doors. It makes something difficult even worse. The wise use of credit is something you can teach someone pretty easily. You can play with credit cards to buy things you would have bought in cash and gain the points. Unfortunately, many people use credit cards as personal banks, where they overspend and cannot pay it back. Then, they forget about it and pay a ton of interest and lose their credit score. Open a line of credit, keep it in good shape and open for more than 10 years. It will boost your score and give you the ability to borrow a lot of cheap money in the future. Number 7. Insurance. When you talk about emergencies, you talk about insurance. Insurance is only there if you need it. You will never want to use it. The most common types of insurances that exist are house insurance, car insurance and life insurance. These happen to be the most important and expensive three things a human being possesses. That is why they are tied up with an insurance policy. Things happen and you have to be ready for them. The house can burn down or flood, a car can get in a wreck, you may lose your life in an accident or through a disease. Whatever the situation is, you need to be protected with insurance. You can also add business insurance, which will protect your businesses against lawsuits and liability. There are also personal insurances like the ones doctors get to practice. Having an emergency fund with six months of monthly living expenses and all these kinds of insurances will guarantee you live a more relaxed life, and you are ready when the storm comes. Trust me, it will. Number 8. Taxes. Taxes and death are two things you cannot avoid in life. At least taxes can be postponed, while death can't. This is a very interesting topic and it has a lot of information to learn. I understand why they don't teach it at school. They will have to teach a full degree to really get you deep into taxation. The one thing you have to know is that you can get income from four different ways. You can be an employee with a W-2, self-employed, a business owner with an LLC or corp, or an investor. The only one of these four that has zero control on its taxes is the employee. Once you get paid, the money was already retained for your taxes. The other three should hire a CPA or tax attorney to minimize their tax impact. Whatever they are doing now, they could do better with a professional. There are always ways you can deduct expenses or defer taxes for the future. Taxes pay for things in the country, so they are necessary. Make sure you pay your fair share of taxes without leaving a tip. Number 9. How to keep healthy. I kind of object with this one in the sense that many schools are putting a lot of propaganda in favor of healthy eating these days. I think that 20 years ago this was a complete reality. When I was in school back in the days, no one ever talked about health or healthy eating. They just told us to exercise three times per week and that was it. By the way, nobody did. Around 20% of the people I hanged out with really did some sort of constant exercise. I always lifted weights and did cardio since I was 18. Nowadays, I eat way healthier than when I was in my college years. I will come up with my first book that talks about how a foreigner can be successful in America and the world, and it has a whole chapter on healthy lifestyle you will enjoy. This is also taught in the house, not in school. If your parents don't know any better, you will come out of your house with bad eating and exercising habits. Don't blame them, 
blame it on you, that you received a college education and you cannot self-learn. There is so much information on YouTube and Google that tells you exactly what you should and shouldn't be eating and how you should be exercising. Do not start blaming others for your gut. It is all on you. Number 10. College debt is not 100% necessary. Schools are never going to teach you not to attend school. I mean, you have to be kidding me on this one. What I mean with this is that every student out there has options. When I listen that someone owes more than $100,000 in student loans, I really dig in on why that was possible. The reason is always because they chose an expensive major or the school is an expensive private one. If you don't have the discipline to pay off loans on time and budget your money, do not go into private schools and get a ton of debt. You will bury yourself since day one. Start by attending a cheaper community college and get as many credits as you can. After that, apply for a state university and get a part-time job in a bar or restaurant. Use 100% of your willpower to pay for the school as much as you can. I know you want to drink, I know you want to party. Coming out from college with a $10,000 debt is not the same as coming out with a $60,000 debt. Think about it, college lasts for 4 years. Some degrees last for more. Then, your life will last for 50, 60, or more. Do you want to start off in the wrong foot and be in debt for 10 to 15 years after that? Make sure you stay watching our next related video to discover amazing videos. If you have any comments please leave them in the comments box below. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.